Okay, so let's take a look at this last problem here, which is question number eight. Um, and it's a, a, a sort of a sales optimization question where we're asked to calculate what would be the, the lowest ticket cost that would produce the maximum number of tickets sold if we're shooting for a certain sales amount. So it's a, um, it's a bit of a, it's a financial question, um, sort of a sales question, but the way that they're asking it is, um, could be, a, it's a little bit uh, interesting in the way they, they set it up. So let's just take a look at, at how this is supposed to kind of work. So I'm just gonna say that, let's say we were selling something for $2. Okay, and at $2 we can sell so many units. And then the idea is, is that if we drop the price by, in this case, 50 cents, okay, our price would go down to $1.50. Okay, and then let's say we drop the price again by another 50 cents and our price would then go to $1. Okay, so this is what this question is, is asking us. They're saying that every time we drop the price by 50 cents, um, we gain 100 units of sales. Okay, so we increase the price the number of sales by plus 100 but and that happens for every time we drop the unit price by 50 cents okay so on one side we're dropping the price each time and then on the other side we're making um more more tickets more more units of that thing being sold okay so the equation that we we have to look at that we're trying to optimize here in general terms what we're looking at here is we're looking at sales of something being equal to always the price okay and the price is going to be something in dollars times the number of units sold okay so this is going to be units and this is just going to be a number so the price is so if we're selling say nuts and bolts okay if the price is a dollar for each bolt and we are selling 20 bolts Right, our total sales is going to be $20, 20 times 20 units times $1, right? So sales is going to be always a value here in dollars. Okay, so that's the equation we're trying to optimize. But what are we actually trying to figure out here? What's our variable going to be? Okay, so our variable is something that is actually going to be counting the number of times we choose to reduce the price by 50 cents. Okay, that's actually what we're actually counting. We're not counting price. We're not even counting um, number of things sold. We're, we're counting the number of times that we drop the price. Okay, so we could simply just write down a let statement that say let x equals to the number of 50 cent decreases, okay, 0 0.50 decreases, because this is what we're counting here, all right? And then every time that drops by 50 cents or some multiple of it, okay, the sales goes up by uh, this, uh, an equ an, a certain amount, but it's again, it's an amount that we can count. Okay, so how does this going to look at, at, as an equation here? Well, we know our sales is going to be 12,750. So we can write that number down to start with here. Okay, 12,750. And then we know what our price is going to be. We know our price is going to start out at $10. But every time we drop the price, we have to subtract um, 50 cents. So how do we write an expression that, that calculates price like that? Okay, so it can be done by just writing it this way. We're gonna say we start with $10, and every time we, we decrease uh, a unit of 50 cents, we're going to subtract that 50 cents from it but we're going to subtract it times the number of times we did it. So in general terms, it's $10 minus 0.5x. Okay, so if you think about that, if I drop the price twice, two times 50 cents each time, that's going to be a total of a dollar. My equation would be 10 minus 0.5 times two because right? that's the number of units that it went down by. If it was one, if it was zero, then we don't change the price, right? So, so this is the, if you think back to way, way back in the beginning of the course when we looked at sort of patterns, 
we're going from two to dollar fifty to a dollar. Okay, but we're subtracting fifty cents each time. But we have to we we you do that as a sequence. Okay, so this is ten minus point five times x. And then what's the number of units sold? Well, the units sold in this question is we're always going to start with twelve hundred. Okay. And then we are going to add 100 units every time we drop that, that price decrease. So how does that look as an expression? Well, that's just 1,200 plus 100 times x. Okay, so if you think about it, again, if we drop the price twice, 2 units of 50 cents, we're going to increase the number of units sold by 100 units times 2 every time we do that. Okay, so in general, it's just 100x, and we're adding it to the total. Okay, so this is the equation that we need to um, figure out and optimize. So out of this, we, we can get in a quadratic. Um, we just have to work out the values here. So this is going to be 10 times 1,200 is 12,000. This is going to be 10 times uh, 100x, which is going to be plus 1,000x. Um, 0.5 times 1200 is um, minus um, minus 600x and then 0.5 times 100 and that's negative it's going to be minus 50x okay so this is what we're getting as our equation if we'll pull it together here let's just see what we get so this is going to be okay, do one more step here We'll get rid of the 12,000s just yet, but we're going to have plus 400x minus 50x. Okay, so now I just need to really move this over and make this kind of as easy as possible. So I'm going to bring the 50x over, so that means I'm going to add 50x, right? I'm going to bring the 400 over, so I'm going to have to subtract 400x. And the 12,000 is going to stay there, but I'm going to subtract the 12,000. 750 from it so is that looking right here it's 12,750 oh sorry I'm just going to bring over the 12,000 so that means I'm going to just subtract it and that's going to give me 750x because I 750 I just want to make that equal to zero okay so that's the way whoops that's the way our equation is going to end up looking so to solve this you got a couple of choices okay you could graph it um, using a graphing tool um, you could try the quadratic formula which will always work these numbers are a little bit big but what i would first do here is take out the gcf because that's usually what we got to look for and if we really look at it here 50 can come out of this equation Okay, so 50 times 8 is 400, so that's going to give us negative 8 in the middle term. And then the 750 is going to be, if you divide it out, you're going to see that it is plus 15. 5 times 15 is 75, and then we add the 0, and that's equal to 0. So this gives us a nice um, compact equation to work with. Okay, if we're lucky, this thing is probably factorable. Okay, so just work this out here. This is going to, we need factors to get us to ne uh, plus 15 and negative 8. So we can do negative 5 and negative 3, and that will satisfy it. So that means we have a solution where x is 5 or 3. So which is the one that is going to work? Okay, so what do we ask for in our question? We need to go back and look at what we're being asked for. We want the lowest ticket cost. So the lowest ticket cost is going to be achieved by having the biggest number of 50 cent decreases in price. So we would have to choose number five here. So the price of the ticket, okay, so they could ask you a few questions here. They're only asking for the price of the ticket. The price of the ticket is 10 minus 0.5 um, times five, which is going to be 10 minus 250 which is seven dollars and fifty cents that is the lowest price that we could get for the tickets um, we wouldn't use three because that's less numbers of 50 cents that we take off okay so that would be our final answer for that now they could also ask you for um oh they do ask you for the other thing how many tickets would be sold well the tickets would be sold is equal to so number of tickets is equal to 
1200 plus 100x. So we know we're going to sell five of those. So our tickets are going to give us 1200 plus 500, which is 1700 tickets. Okay, so we could get that through from graphing, but those are the two acceptable answers that we're looking for. So it's a little bit involved, this question. Um, the math is really not different than what you've seen before. It's just setting up the equation and understanding how to really generate this thing right here um, would be the tricky part in this problem because you have to understand what is the variable going to be and what are we actually counting. Okay, so hopefully that was uh, helpful. Um, these last few questions here are really among the hardest word problems you'll see. And there's a variety of them. So it's just important that you study these and understand what the, uh, the form of how to do them. Um, this one is a little bit unique because you do have to, you, you'd have to know how to calculate sales in general. Um, but then you are going to have to sort of derive this expression and kind of think about how, how you get it. So it is, it is a little bit of one of the tougher ones and that is why it's at the very end.